Uh, Mr. President, uh, the next item is uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Moore, uh, who's in my office. Ms. Mr. President, we have a situation where I have money in my budget. Uh, I got Ms. Mangum that's part-time. I got Mr. Flowers that's part-time. Uh, and we're trying to bring this more on full time. We brought a, a college student, even though the county no longer uses uh, college students who was at the city with me, who was part time. Uh, we're trying to give these young people experience uh, in terms of working around the government. And you, you just don't know how to vet these college students out, especially with people from Ms. Mangum who pray for a daughter who's been ill in Ms. Mangum, uh, been in and out. And this young college student can come here and make sure the office runs smoothly. What we're trying to do is bring Ms. Uh, Ms. Moore on uh, as a full time employee in my office. Okay. Um, it won't have any impact on the budget. Okay, Ms. Uh, Davis, would you like to address it or? Sure. Where the county administrator, uh, through the Human Capital Development Department, uh, provides support staff to each district office. Um, the positions are called special project officer, and each supervisor has um, two full-time positions allocated to those districts to support those particular district offices. Um, some some supervisors choose to break up those two full-time positions in part-time positions, or or a combination thereof. Uh, right now, as, as it relates to the budget and, and the allocation of staff, we do have um, two supervisory districts that do have available slots, which would be uh, Supervisor Graham, President Graham with one part-time position and Supervisor Fisher with one full-time position. Um, to speak specifically to Supervisor Stokes' position, um, those positions are full filled with four part-time positions, which are two full-time positions. Um, yes, I'm aware of the desire to hire Ms. Moore for full-time employment, but as I um, indicated, based on the allotment that was approved by the board, um, those two full-time slots were filled, and if I felt that I was obligated to uh, abide by the board policy uh, as it relates to hiring freeze, if, if I uh, were to add a position there that would be creating a new job and I am bound by the policy of the board that was that was uh, adopted in 2009 to come to the board for approval to create a new position. So um, that's why I put it on the So I believe exactly that I believe that's why Supervisor Sue has brought this to the board. Okay. Um, now let me say this Mr. President. Now in 2009 when you had the high freeze I wasn't here. Uh, again, there's no impact on the budget. The money is in my budget. It's not like we got to go find money or anything else. I think Supervisor Anderson and, and the <coughs> District uh, 2 and, and myself, we have the large, some, I consider the largest areas because we have to go all into the rural plus the city and everywhere else. And, you know, you got to have someone who can help do these jobs. Now, <coughs> I understand the uh, special project officers, and, and I'm not going to get into a, a back and forth on that. I know in the home rule, uh, the supervisors could have hired their own people on the home rule, reading the reading soda. But again, we have one college student that is part time. We have Miss Mangum and Mr. Flowers, and there's no impact on the budget. We want to bring in, uh, would you please stand, Miss Moore, who's more than qualified. She's a uh, She's a, a, an attorney that's licensed in the state of Mississippi, and the pay is not even comparable to what the terms are being paid. Okay. Uh, I, my only question I had was, she be brought on as an attorney? No, sir. She's coming in as a, an aide to the councilman of Wardry. She's not going to be an attorney. And I'll pay my bill turn up later. Okay. All right. Um, Supervisor Fisher. Do I understand you know that, that he currently you have four part time, which equals two full time jobs, which is what the budget requires, and if this is creating a third. 
basically a defective third is penal position by a new creating a new job. Is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. So in effect, you would have three SPOs, and where, where the budget is budgeted for two, well, with, with, my, with the exception of me, apparently, we found out in this budget, or I'm only budgeted for one, but uh, everyone else should be budgeted for two. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Excuse me, last because she's already on as half time, so it would be bringing her to uh, full time, which means it would be 2.5. Right. right. And the so part time. Seems, so, 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 so this would exceed the budget? No. Right. It would exceed the number of slots. Slots, right. not budget, not dollars. We have the dollars there. It's just that somewhere down the line, uh, they said there was a freeze, and this way the kicker is, but it don't apply to elected officials. We are elected officials. Well, so I how can the freeze think, apply to us? I think anything that, that this board does uh, for the county applies to us, government. Well, no, I'm, I'm telling you the law. I'm telling you what they gave me a copy of. It does not apply to elected officials. Now, that's what you approved in 2009. Any additional comments as it relates to this particular issue? Um, Ms. Woods, do you have any additional comments or Ms. Martin as it relates to this particular issue? No, I don't. Okay. All right. So would you please restate your motion again, Mr. Stubbs? Uh, Mr. President, uh, Supervisor Anderson also. Uh, the motion is to bring Ms. Moore on as a full-time employee. Uh, the money that we currently have in the budget, we have enough to to uh, pay Ms. Moore. She's not getting paid what Lois get paid. She's getting paid for back in the salary. The only difference is we brought in a college student who was with us at the city. And this college student don't work as many hours, but she's been trained to be able to uh, help as a college student. But Ms. Moore would be a full time. Uh, Ms. Mangum is here. She's dealing with sick and <coughs> family now and Mr. Flowers. So we won't affect the only way we can basically do it, because she's here part time. We're trying to do it as full time. It's arranged before the board. You don't have to make any budget adjustments. You don't have to put any more money in my budget. We have the money there for her. Okay. It's been moved. Is there a second? Is there a second? Second. <laughs> Is there a second? Motion to ask for a second. Okay, Mr. Stokes, continue, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, we want to discuss Highway 27. And I got a, a young man here from who. Uh, the concern was that, and Mr. Freeze, you might can guide us, uh, on Highway 27, uh, some years ago, the uh, MDOT had done a study uh, to widen Highway 27, I think maybe three years ago. And we're trying to find out the status. I think it was going to be wide from Vicksburg to Crystal Springs. And we're trying, to find, we're trying to find out the status of it, who would it been funded. To Vicksburg to? From Vicksburg to Crystal Springs. We can research that and bring it back to you. And let us know the status right. of it and how much funds we have in it. Correct. Thank you. Okay. Continue, Mr. Stubbs. Uh, Mr. President, we have the appointment of uh, Attorney Chuck Way to move to the Hines County Community College Board of Trustees for District 5. Okay. It's been moved. So moved. It's um, been moved. Is there a second? Is there a second? Mr. Fisher, you have your line on. Uh, I was going to wait to see if there's a second. Okay. okay. Is there a second? For a group two to four. Okay. Motion to ask for a lack of a second. Um, Ms. Gordon, would you like to move? Um, my understanding is 
that the Hines County Community College Board of Trustees is an executive position and, excuse me, yes, is an executive position and that a council person is a legislative position. So it actually would be a violation of the separation of powers for Mr. Ramuga to serve on this particular board. And uh, in addition to that, there is an AG opinion that discusses the fact that once members of the community college boards and other boards uh, have been selected, they are permitted to serve the remainder or full extent of their term. Well, thank you. I, I wish we had had a copy of that opinion uh, in terms of Mr. the movement and the possibility of a conflict of interest. Uh, but I do know this, that there is no way uh, that that's anything that can supersede of uh, the state law and it's considered a, a prior term. A prior term is simply that she was appointed uh, during the term of another supervisor. And once that supervisor's term is up, her term is up. Now, this case law go back to 1927, that state prior term. So I don't know what the board has adopted as a policy. But that policy can't uh, supersede uh, state law. So now, to say that she's going to sit there, even though she's a project reporter, it's absolutely crazy. And it's not going to happen with my watch. Okay. Uh, continue, please. So let me make sure I have this. And I wish I could get it in writing. You're saying that we can't put Attorney Chuck Wade on Momo and Hines County Community College Board because of what? A violation of separation of powers. Can we get that right? Yes, sir. I can provide that to you. All right. You. Thank you. And I wish again we got that. This been on the agenda since the general was out. We should have never seen that, and we could have had that answer, uh, that question answered. There been some some supervisors had wind of it since nobody was talking it, and I didn't have an idea. But we'll deal with Mr. Lamont. Thank you. Uh, the second appointment is from Mr. Robert Wall to the E nine one E nine one one Board of Trustees for District Five. Okay, it's been excuse me, Mr. Fisher. Uh, the appointments that, that, that are in line here, there's also an Attorney General's opinion about serving the complete term of, of that appointment. Do, do those appoint, do, does that ruling by the Attorney General apply to the next three? Actually, um, there's not been an opinion that I have seen that completely discusses boards. Uh, generally, the questions that have been presented that I've noted have been with respect to specific boards. But yes, it does appear that the general trend has been once uh, a person has been appointed to a commission board, then that person serves until the expiration of that term, unless there is some type of law provision that authorizes um, that person leaving office. For instance, if there's some type of malfeasance and, and the person resigns, things of that nature. But I will state this. I believe the uh, practice of this board in the past has been when there is a new uh, board, then there are new appointments, particularly to certain uh, boards. For instance, I believe the E91, E911 uh, board, for instance, uh, when there's been a new supervisor, there's been a new person appointed. Has been the uh, traditional actions of this board. Okay, uh, Mr. Stokes, continue. Uh, or is there a motion for Mr. Robert Wong? So moved. Okay, it's been moved. Is there a second? I'll second. It's been moved and properly second uh, that Mr. Robert Wall be appointed to the E911 board. Discussion? All those in favor of? Yes. Opposed to? No. Motion passes. Okay, continue please. Uh, Mr. President, we have uh, Dr. Keith Stokes for the Hines County Economic Development Board of Trustees for District 5. It's been moved that Mr. Stokes be appointed to the uh, Economic Development Board. Is there a second? I'll second it. It's been moved and properly seconded. All those in favor of? I have a quick question. Mr. Fisher? Uh, just as a as, as question we've always asked on this one, is, is there any relationship, Mr. Stokes, to you and Keith Stokes? Yes, he's my son. Okay. okay. 
been moved and properly seconded. All those in favor of? Yes. Opposed to? No. Motion passes. Continue, please. Mr. President. Excuse me. Uh, uh, may I uh, have that motion be pending or the approval be pending at this commission? Okay. Okay. It'll be pending. Uh, would you please add that to the uh, motion, Greta? I think we, what we need to do is to make sure that we uh, get these on the last. I've uh, failed to do so on the last. Uh, well, it wasn't passed, but on the last one, with Mr. Wall, would you please read that motion as well as the one with Mr. Stokes? Uh, on the Mr. Member item number six, it is resolved to appoint Mr. Robert Wall to the E911 Council for District 5. Okay. And then the second one is to appoint Dr. Keith Stokes to the Hines County Economic Development Authority Board of Trustees for District 5 pending. Uh, approval from the ethics committee. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Continue, Mr. Stokes. Uh, Mr. President, uh, I want to make sure that we get this on the list also. Because the case is uh, Board of Supervisors versus Parks, uh, 132 Mississippi, 752, 96 Southern 466, a 1923 case, the Board of Supervisors has no authority to enter an order as of a prior term. And that's what we did with these appointments are prior terms. Now, <clears throat> I move to my next item, but now I'm going to have all the rights that a supervisor is supposed to have. And the way to go to court of laws to obtain those rights is going to happen. When I bring people up here, I expect the same respect. That's when you pray. Thank you. Can okay, continue, please? Uh, Mr. President, this young man here is a young man who I really want to put on the board to fight for the, for the uh, poor people. This young man will be on the board dealing with people who need help with their gas bills and with the light bills. And in terms of trying to block some of these appointments, uh, some have found some law rule where they say the Zena Sanders have a felony. Not for murder, not for robbery, or nothing like that. Say he threatened a jail robber. That should have been his sponsor a long time ago. So I'm going to hold his appointment till we get his regular sponge because it's good to have a fight to make sure poor people have somebody to help them with their light bill, the water bill, the gas bill. Mr. Sam, we'll break it back. Thank you, Mr. President. Continue. Uh, Mr. President, the discussion of the contract with Airways Consultants, and uh, it's important, Mr. President, that uh, when we can save the kind of money, we must save the kind of money. Uh, I think Ms. Mangum, I got that contract, uh, must have been in the middle of last week. I'm thoroughly researching the contract, I'm trying to dissect it. It's a poorly written contract. I don't know who do the contract does. But uh, we're going to hold this item to the next board meeting because now I understand the difference between uh, a contract for uh, services uh, versus a billion. And I think that's one of the issues that people are dealing with, why this was not being it out instead of professional services. But we'll look at this contract and at the next meeting uh, we'll make sure that we have uh, all our questions. Uh, that we need to have answered. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Continue, please. Uh, Mr. President, in observance of Black History Month, uh, we're asking, and some still remember Chief Robert T. White, that we uh, name the road lead to the Pena Farm in honor of Chief Robert T. White. Okay. It's, so moved. it's been moved. Is there a second? Is there a second? Is there a second? Second. <laughs> um, motion dies for a lack of a second. This is motion dies for a lack of a second. Uh, this is in Mr. Is this in your This is this in your Okay. Do you give a comment or anything? Well, no, I, I'm not in favor of the 
process of renaming roads for the sake of renaming roads, but I would also point out that the county has a process going through the planning and zoning board that requires, that has requirements before we rename anything. It's just not randomly done uh, by, by the uh, governing body. So, for future reference, reading the regulations of the county and understanding them would be good uh, for anyone who wants to change something. Uh, there's a $200 uh, payment or fee to do so, and it's followed up by a vote by the uh, Planning and Zoning Board. It has to be supported by a large number, if not 100% of the people on the street. I mean, there's, there's a whole process that we go through, which may be different from the city of Jackson. So, uh, and then this one met none of that criteria, as it was not brought to us by recommendation from any board at all. Uh, Mr. President, Mr. Senator, uh, there's no question that as a board of supervisors, we can name county roads without getting permission from underlings. And for a board member to say we got to follow that procedure, that particular rule is absolutely ludicrous. Now, if we get a second to this motion, it's done. Now, if we don't get the second and get the vote, then it's not done. So, you know, it's just a matter of time before Kenneth Stokes gets some help up here. And by the time I get some help, we're going to name things to other people doing Black History Month. Thank you. Okay, continue, please. Uh, Mr. President, I'm a whole item of uh, uh, number the presentation is from Mr. Ben Thank you, Evan. Okay, we will continue with the printed agenda. Uh,